wraps us up at the end with that. This is what we learned this week. So it's this has been. This is this is what we learned this week. So there's three thises. And the so that that's, that's a good. It's a good case for just what we learned this week. Yeah. Welcome to This Is What We Learned This Week. And as far as I know, this show is about what we learned this week. Yeah, that's right. That- that's exactly right. Okay, all right. Yeah. That's my intro. So I'll kick it off to you all. You're the more experienced podcasters here. All right. Uh, my name is Anika. I am a junior majoring in American Studies and also one of the Steely Partners. And I'm Ryan Harp. Uh, I'm a Steely partner, and I'm studying film studies and English. Oh, wait, I just forgot to mention, like, I sent in my declaration form for a second major yesterday for APIA studies, so technically I'm a double major now. All right. I'm Adam Barger. I'm with Steely. I'm the executive director, and I teach classes on digital fluency. Whoa. What is digital fluency? It's a good question. You're going to have to take the class to uh, figure that out. No, I'm just kidding. Uh. <laughs> the idea of digital fluency, which is not something I learned this week, but maybe I could teach you something, is what do you need to know and do to make the digital world work for you and not against you? Interesting. So these are kind of life and learning skills. Mm-hmm. So that's that. But what did you learn? Uh, well... I, you know, I had something, and then it just vanished from my mind. Give me a second. Yeah, so in my intro to production class in film studies, we had a whole uh, session about just different interview skills and, you know, the practical end of it, like setting up for the interview, but also just, like, how to conduct an interview. And it was it was really helpful for me because it ties into the work I do at Steely a lot. Nice. Very good. Very good. What class was that again? Uh, intro to production. Okay. All right. I learned, uh, I'm still learning. I, I don't know if I could say I, I've learned it. I've, I'm trying to learn about a new research approach called Q. Q? Has anybody heard of Q? Is that like some kind of, I've heard of R. Is You've it heard of similar R. It's, to? There are some overlaps. So um, Q is a way to uh, mix methods, so it's quantitative and qualitative together, uh, to measure and evaluate subjective opinion. So oftentimes you think subjective opinion, you think that's not something you can really measure. It's more just like qualitative, trying to understand people. Well, the Q method says that you can also measure it, and there's ways to do that. And so that's I'm learning about it now, but what I've picked up so far is it has to do with um, bringing people in as individuals, and they, they sort things or organize things according to their preference. So, you know, uh, maybe it's about how much a certain situation uh, reflects their beliefs, or maybe it's about their preferences on something, and they, they sort out different categories and form kind of like this bell curve of sorts, and then you do that with a bunch of people, and then you measure their opinions across the population. Wow. So that's that. What do you gain from measure- measurements like that? I haven't learned that part yet, oh. but <laughs> what, from what I can tell is it's a good way to um, add some quantitative and more structured approach to um, very subjective areas. So you're trying to make the subjective objective. And so we could say, in general, the opinions of students at William & Mary about the cafeteria uh, reflect these things. And it's uh, a more robust approach than maybe like a survey. I see. Uh, something I learned this week was actually in my intro Native Studies class, intro to Native Studies class, like uh, we watched a documentary about the Modoc War, which took place... In, in California, like, and at the time, the Modoc people and tribes, like, uh, the U.S. government army was trying to take over their land because of uh, 
re- because of resources like gold and you know the space for ranches and cattle and it was like the most i think what do you call it not televised the most like reported war like like kind of combat between native americans and like the american uh american soldiers and whatnot but like i hadn't heard of it until that class and i know some it's there's a lot there's a lot to unpack because it was a seven month long war but the one thing i remember finding really interesting was just like how crazy creative the native americans were in that region about like because in that region the it's like where present day there's like a lava beds monument there and that's like present day where it is and so because of like the lava flows there's like these weird like craggy caverns and cave pathways so like they kind of use their environment to their advantage to like fend off people who were trying to invade and take over the land and like something they did was like light fires in the caves and just send a few men running around to pick pick them off one by one so it looked like they had a huge uh, fighting force when it was just very few people trying to like defend their homeland, defend their homes, their people. W- when did this take place? I am blanking on the date right now. <laughs> because I believe that, uh, so in my documentary photography class, we watched a, a film on Edward Moybridge, who was a photographer in the 19th century. There and was someone from the U.S. government who took photos of Yeah, the he, he documented the war, but the thing that was hilarious to me is that he just, like, it was completely fake. Like, he just, like, made up, he staged photos. Yeah. The people in the photos weren't actually from the tribe, or they weren't from the opposing force. Mm. So it was, it was kind of uh, just... I don't want to say humorous, but it was ironic just, like, how artificial the, the like, documentation from that conflict was. Yeah. That's a great connection across two, two things you learned. I like it. We're getting better at it. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was lucky because just happened to watch something that briefly touched on that conflict. Mm. So we, we're supposed to connect the dots, right? So what's... How do, how do we connect the dots with mine? I'm the I'm the odd duck here. Oh no. Uh-huh. Document documenting skills, or well, interview yeah. skills. I mean, you can you can look at an interview as a gauging of opinion. A mm-hmm. lot of times, it's definitely a different approach to a, like a systematic, you know, quantitative analysis, mm-hmm. but. They, they have their own, they have pros and cons, you know, there's stuff you get from a survey that you might not get from an interview, but there's stuff like emotion that you get from an interview that mm-hmm. you don't really get from a survey a lot of the time. And if you don't do that kind of thing, if you're not actively documenting, researching, uh, we find ourselves in this situation where we forget, where we don't know about things. Oh. You know, I didn't know about that either. You know, so <laughs> how, you know, how is it that we forget these important moments in history? Uh, you know, maybe we need to do a better job um, understanding the people yeah. involved with them. A little bit of a stretch, but I think it works. Yeah, I know. Like the uh, some of the reasoning, I think, is because like the U.S. in some ways, like they didn't easily win this war, which is why I think we don't know about it. So they don't want to adver- advertise their some of their failures mm. in trying to take over the land. Mm. Interesting. All right. Close it out? Uh, I don't want to close it out okay. again. Okay, I'll, I'll, close, it, I'll close it out. <laughs> I'm Ryan Harp. This has been, this is what we learned this week. Thank you. Thank you. (laughs) Thanks for having me.